Hello and welcome to the Assemblée Nationale. We're here today for the conference on the digital revolution. With me, Sim Sikert, who is Chief Information Officer at the for the Estonian government. Sim Sikert, we were talking today a lot about the transition of the digital and we have a feeling that Estonia is quite ahead of the rest of the European countries. What measures have um, has the Estonian government implemented in order to be um, at the at the forefront of this uh, digital revolution? Well, long story and very short. So um, yes, we've been going digital for the last 20 years now, and I think there's a few things we learn on, on the road that really sort of help us move faster. And like I said, shortly then, first of all, we haven't been afraid to take risks and try out new technologies, I think, and, and new ways of doing things, because most is about transformation. Digital only helps that, but exactly how to change how we do things. And, and yes, politically, administratively, that means exactly, you know, boldness to try out uh, stuff. Um, secondly, I think uh, we really benefited from shared platforms. So by putting in place some building blocks that then different sectors, different departments or ministries can reuse to digitize their own sort of services and, and back office. So things like nationwide digital identity has been very helpful. Um, nationwide data exchange platforms, so things exactly that everybody needs, but if they're there, they can just reuse and digitization happens faster. And the last bit, um, we have worked heavily uh, actually with other partners from academic circles, from companies, from other countries. So exactly, we've been trying to copy everything that works basically. And, and I mean, that basically means that this way we can move ahead faster by not reinventing the wheels. Okay. Um, in France and in other countries in Europe, we have the feeling, or some citizens have the feeling that they don't really trust uh, data protection. Is this problem also in Estonia, or has the government been able to reassure its citizens about their concerns? Mm -hmm. It's not really a problem in Estonia, and I think uh, that's a manifest of a few things. First of all, um, yes, we do work on this a lot, and it starts really from how we design systems in the first place, trying to make them sort of you know, protect privacy and try to make sure that you know, they're cyber secure as well. Um, we use latest uh, state-of-the-art technology for this purpose, and s like uh, cryptography and so forth. So yes, from designing systems, how we run them daily, the legal framework around this, all the way from you know, strong protections of privacy to the penalties we impose if it's been breached. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's the whole context of the safeguards, basically, that are there in place. What has been the most useful feature is be has been that, um, at least when it comes to government, people have a very effective way of looking at and finding out wha what has happened to the data. They can literally log in to the same service portals where they get the services from and see who has been accessing the data, for example, health data or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. So basically they have an oversight and they practically can sort of control the data. And the very last bit, um, ultimately it also comes down to this, that um, we do a trade-off, don't we, in a sense that uh, if services provide us value, we are happy to accept some risks. Even if, and if there's risks are managed, then the more we're happy to go for the value. That's why we all use the emails of the world, right? By sort of, you know, uh, not naming any names, but you know, big companies out there, right? Because we get some value. Email makes our life so much easier, even if it comes to the risk of our data being sort of, you know, used for purposes we might not like to. It's a bit the same with the government. If the services provide value, if we have the proper safeguards in place, people will trust. Okay. And um, one of the remarkable things in Estonia is that they offer this um, e-residency uh, status f in order to uh, encourage entrepreneurship. Um, this is quite rare in Europe. Do you, have, do you think that this could be implemented in other European countries or do you feel there's um, a reticence to do so? Well, to be honest, I mean, this is so far rare in the world. We're still the only, only country having something like that. But I think the next countries are joining up quite soon. And basically, to answer your question, only all it takes is two things. Strong uh, digital identity. And secondly, basically, services to use identity for, right? All the way to signing things digitally. So if these are there, yes, basically, the whole market is all open. And actually, we would, we would like some competition. So, uh, yes, we welcome any, everybody who has this criteria filled, basically, join the market. There's so many people around the world who want to be served digitally by governments, not necessarily their own, but exactly by, by being able to ac have access to services that allow them to work and, and do business across the borders freely. Um, since we're in France at the Assemblée Nationale, um, can you tell us if there's any cooperation between the French and the Estonian governments uh, in terms of uh, the digital um, way of doing things? Uh, what, what, what are the accesses that there's maybe a co cooperation on? I think through the years already we've had quite a lot of uh, deepening dialogue, first of all, with the French governments, uh, you know, 
multiple ones of them, and especially as we are together in European Union, right, and, and working on digital topics there. Secondly, so it's been like a deepening relationship. And now when the uh, Macron government came in, then it's, it's actually sort of gotten to the next level, and I think quite soon we will be announcing actually some concrete sort of um, projects and initiatives we will be together working on. Um, the French government learning and taking on board Estonian practices and solutions and the other way around as well. So, and, and my last bit is to say that actually and that, uh, we already have enjoyed um, thorough, good um, relations in cybersecurity, by the way. So um, French ANSI and, and Estonian counterparts are just you know, in, in regular exchange. And, and again, that's a relationship we're only happy to deepen. Thank you very much, Sim Sickert. Timothy Luet from Tutlop.